way or else. That's it. And His way is simply submitting ourselves to the cross of Calvary. And say, Lord, there's no hope for me other than what You have already accomplished for me. We as Christians, we as children of God, we live so far below what God has for us. We don't realize just how, what kind of riches that we possess in Jesus Christ. He's given us everything. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is blessed of the Father. He's been blessed of the Father. And the Bible says that we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That means that everything that belongs to Jesus Christ belongs to me. Yes. He gave us healing when He died on the cross of Calvary. He delivered us from drugs and alcohol and boo booze and lewd living and, and adultery and fornication and all these all these things and these bad thoughts, evil, wickedness, strife, envy, all this stuff, jealousy. He died on the cross of Calvary to deliver us from it. And I tell you, when He forgave us, He didn't do it halfway. He done it all the way. And our problem is, is we don't forgive ourselves. A lot of times. And we just don't believe. This is what it boils down to sometimes. We as children of God just do not believe that what Jesus did on the cross is enough. We may say that we do. But our actions prove opposite a lot of times. Because we find ourselves trying to live right so that we'll be right with God. And you can't do that. You cannot live good enough to be right with God. If that was true, then I know a whole lot of folks in the Catholic Church that ain't got to worry. If that be the case, I know a whole lot of people in the Mormon Church that ain't got to worry. I know a lot of people. I know people in the Masonic Lodge. If that be the case, they ain't got a bit of worry. Because they live good. They live a moral right life. But the problem of it is is you can't put your trust in good. Good will send you to hell just like bad will send you to hell. The only thing that saves you and I, the only thing that gives you and I eternal salvation is not something that we do, but it's something that we believe and that's what Jesus did for us on the cross. I made mention last week that I've been so excited because I've been reading these posts on on Facebook about people here in the prayer meeting that's been getting jobs. Some of you have gotten jobs. Some of them have gotten promotions. Some of them have gotten raises at work and such things as that. Listen, that's God's blessing on your life. That's God's blessing on a child of God. It's not something that you've done to earn it. Don't think that. That's God's blessing on you. It's not because you was highly favored by somebody at work. It's because God has blessed you. It's because God loves you. God wants to increase your life, not only your, your spiritual, but He wants to increase your, your living around you. Listen, if you get the spiritual right, that which surrounds you will grow. If you get the spiritual right, where did you make the right decisions and the, the right choices? And you let the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of God work in your life, you'll begin to see your life turn around. Oh, you may have some things come against you. You may have some people in your family that does some stupid stuff that hurts you once in a while. You may think that it sets you back a step or two. But listen, don't give up. Don't give up on Jesus Christ. Keep on going because eventually God's going to bring that thing around and you're going to look around five years from now and you're going to say, man, look where the Lord has brought me from. Amen. Just because that we have a spiritual setback once in a while, does not mean that we've got to start all over again. When we have a spiritual setback, when we have a failure, where we fail God in life, the best thing we can do is go to the foot of the cross. Go to the man. Go to the one who saved us and say, Lord, forgive me, and pick up and go on. Yes. I mean, if I'm out there cutting the grass and the lawnmower runs out of gas, well... Not a bad example with me. <laughs> but most people, if they're cutting the grass and the lawnmower runs out of gas, they don't say, oh, well, it's over. I'll never be able to use that mower again. 
I'm going to have to go buy a new one. That one is not running. And that's the way we are spiritually a lot of times. We fail God and we think that we can't come back. We think we've got to start all over again. We feel like that we've messed up and somehow or another we've got to go all the way back and we've got to start our spiritual journey and our walk all over again with God. But can I tell you, just ask Him to forgive you and pick up and go on. Don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about what people think. It's what He says and what He thinks that really counts. It's what God says. It's what His Word says. It's what the Scripture teaches. It does not say that God is in the business of punishing His children, but He is in the business of restoring His children, of making it right, making it better. We get this wrong idea because we think that God's up in the heavens with a club just waiting for us to mess up at life. We've been taught it. I grew up in a church where Lord... If I mean, I thought if I'd done something wrong, God was going to club me to death. But as I got to reading the book and I began to read about this loving God that we have, I found out He is a God of judgment. He's a God of righteousness. He's a God of holiness. And He demands holiness out of His people. But what I found out was that living holy was not what I took off or I put on, but it was what Christ had done inside of my heart. I found out that where man wouldn't forgive me, God already had forgiven me. I found out that the God that was unapproachable because of my sin, when Jesus washed my sins away, suddenly that God that was unapproachable, that God that I couldn't even talk to because of my wickedness, suddenly I found out that because Jesus washed away my sins, I could call Him my Father. I could talk to Him as Father. I could pray and say, Father, forgive me. Father, help me. Father, strengthen me. Father, feed me. It's because I got a relationship with Him. The God who was unapproachable, suddenly because of the blood of Jesus, because of the cross, I can now go to Him every time I have a problem, every time I mess up, every time I have a need. I can go to Him and say, Lord, thank You. Thank You. I've got confidence in You that You're taking care of me. But what I found out about a lot of times, the people that are around me that are so-called spiritual, so-called preachers, so-called church, the God who was unapproachable, who now is approachable, I find they're unapproachable because I find myself trying to meet up to their standard because they think for some reason they're holier than anybody else. But can I tell you, they need the same Savior that you need and that's what Jesus had problems with was a bunch of holy religious religious uh, people that thought they were better than anybody else. That's who God had problems with. It wasn't the old tax collector, the publican that smoked his chest and said, forgive me. Just forgive me, for I am a sinful man. Jesus said, you know, the Pharisee got up and talked about, I pay my tithe, you know, I visit the sick, I feed the hungry, I, I do all this, but the old publican, the old tax collector, he wouldn't even look at God. He just smote his chest and said, Forgive me, for I'm a sinful man. And Jesus said, I tell you, that man went away to his house made right because he came with a broken and a contrite spirit. Can I tell you, there's a Lord that loves you? Yes. And if you'll be humble before Him, and I don't mean a fake humility. I can't stand a fake humility. I can't stand a fake humility. When somebody gets up there and they said, Oh, I'm just so unworthy. I'm just so unworthy to stand here. Well, who is? Who is? None of us. None of us are. If you come with the right spirit and you come with the right humility, God will fill you up. God will fill you. Listen, God will fill you with righteousness and He will fill you with His Spirit. If you'll just go to the foot of the cross and say, Lord, I need it. Lord, give it to me. Lord, I trust you. I trust you. I put my confidence in you. Listen, you can't trust people. You can't trust people on this earth. People are fickle. People will do you wrong. People will lie to you. People will steal from you. 
people tell you things that ain't what they are, they'll make you promises and then they won't, they won't deliver on their promise. But can I tell you that there is a God in heaven that if He says it to you, He'll bring it to pass. He'll make it happen for you. If you'll trust in Him, you can trust no man on this earth, but you can trust God. God will see you through and God will meet your needs. Stand with me tonight all over this place.